So it does look as though there was a wide belief among our pagan ancestors in a fertility god. What other forms of religious worship took place in Essex? I asked the Reverend David Williams, parish priest of St Peter and Paul's Church at Horndon on the Hill. Well again, I think, as I said before, the worship of Thor was probably quite strong, um, and hence the name Thurrock, Thor's Oak. Um, and I suppose the, uh, the growing in period was that um, people used to have a type of religion and sacrifice on bloodstones or altars with uh, the local hag, the local witch foretelling, uh, foretelling fortunes. Um, but that was gradually merged with, with Christianity when it came uh, around about 1660 and um, probably the two types of religion inter inter intermix quite a bit. The Christian Church has adopted many pagan festivals into its own calendar, such as the birth of the Sun King at Christmas and the celebration of harvest time. Yet it seems to want to eradicate others, like Halloween. Why do you think that is? Well, I'm not sure that they're trying to eradicate them all. I think a lot of the old customs had a lot of good things within them, celebrating life. And after all, the Christian faith is basically not about a code of morality, as many people think it is, and that spells death but the Christian religion is about life. And therefore, for example, the goddess Estra, E-O-S-T-R-E, gave her name to Easter, and she's the goddess of fertility, and we use the Easter egg as a very natural Christian symbol now, speaking of death through, uh, resurrection through death. Looking around the church, there's evidence of a much older form of religious worship, like the two carved faces above the west door. What can you tell me about those? Uh, no, it, they're, they're shrouded in mystery. Um, they might have been... No, we don't, we don't really know what those are. There's uh, an old Essex legend that Anne Boleyn is buried in the churchyard. Is that true? Well, I'm rather glad it isn't. I don't believe it is, or else we'd have hordes of uh, tourists and we could set up stalls and hot dogs and so on. But um, I think if it were true, it would be, there would be much more able to be authenticated than it is. There's how a, there's how does a it actually come about, the story? Well, there is an old grave over there which used to have a plaque on saying Anne Bullen, the old variation of the name. But um, that's a bit of a, a tenuous link, I think. There's much controversy and conjecture over Anne Bullen's official resting place. Some believe she's buried near this site at Rochford, while others believe she's buried at Fobbing Church. Despite the Reverend William's denial, some inhabitants of Horndon on the Hill insist that Anne is buried in the local churchyard. Stan Tinworth and his cousin George are convinced that they know the actual spot where Anne was laid to rest. Definitely. She's there. Yeah. We know the spot. Mm. There used to be a plate on there. It said Anne Bullen. And Bullens used to have the farm at Horndon House. And uh, they were there, at, at, uh, parents or relatives were there. And definitely believe it's there. Our parents told us. My mum told me and her mum told her and it's handed down and I believe it's true. Certain, absolutely certain. Mm -hmm. Don't take notes of experts. They've only got what they read in books. We know what we've been told. Only that they were evidently trying to get her torso back to France. This was the story I was told, how true it is, I don't know. And the army were after them for stealing the body, evidently, or something or another. That's how the story goes. And they got as far as here, trying to make the river, and they buried her here. <laughs> 